Hello and welcome to another section of this complete Angular course. In this section, we are going to learn all about dynamic components. So in the Angular fundamental section, we learned about components in great detail. We learned how to create a component, how to use a component, how the components are rendered and many more things. Now in this section, we are going to learn more about components and we are going to learn about dynamic components. What is its use and how to create and use them in our Angular application. So what is a dynamic component? Dynamic components are those components which we create dynamically at runtime. Let's try to understand what is a dynamic component with a simple example. So here, let's say we have an Angular application and in that Angular application, we are displaying a list of users. So here we are displaying the details of each user. And for each user, we also have this delete button. Now what we want is, Whenever this delete button is clicked, we want to render a component dynamically. So when this delete button is clicked, let's say we want to render this component where we are showing a confirmation window to the user. So this component should be rendered in the browser only when the delete button is clicked. It should not be rendered when the Angular application loads initially. So here we want to load a component on runtime when a specific action is performed. In this case, when the delete button is clicked and this can be achieved by creating a dynamic component. Now remember that dynamic component is not a specific feature provided by Angular. Instead, it's just a normal component which gets created on runtime. We create or render dynamic component by writing some code. Now, as I mentioned, the dynamic components are rendered on runtime by executing some code. And there are two ways in which we can load a dynamic component in Angular. We can render a component dynamically either by using ng if directive or we can render a component dynamically by using dynamic component loader. Now we already know how ng if directive can be used to render a component or HTML element dynamically in the web page. We have already learned about ng if directive in great detail in the previous lectures of this course. Now when we want to load a component dynamically using ng if directive, all we have to do is on the selector of that component, let's say the component is delete component and the selector for that component is app delete. So on the selector of that component, we will use this ng if directive and to that we need to assign a TypeScript expression which should return a Boolean value. If the TypeScript expression returns truthy value, in that case, that component will be rendered in the web page. But if the TypeScript expression returns a falsy value, in that case, that component will not get rendered in the web page. And if the component is already rendered and the TypeScript expression is returning a falsy value, in that case, that component will be removed from the web page. So creating a dynamic component using ng if directive is as simple as that. Another approach which we can use to create and render a dynamic component is by using dynamic component loader. Now remember that this dynamic component loader was used in past to load components dynamically and this was a helper utility that you should not use anymore. Using this approach, we can create and render a component by writing some code and then we can manually attach that component in the DOM. In this approach, we as a developer need to specify how the component will be instantiated, how the data will be passed into that component and also when to remove that component. In simple words, Everything that ngif does for us, we need to do it by our own when using dynamic component loader approach. Now in this section, we will learn about both these approaches. That's because if you are creating a new Angular application or your application uses recent version of Angular, then ngif approach is all you need to know about. But if you are working on an Angular application where older version of Angular is used and there dynamic component loader approach is being used to create dynamic components, then it's good to have that knowledge as well. So this was a very high level overview of what is a dynamic component and what are the different ways in which we can create a dynamic component in Angular. Now in the next lecture, we will learn how we can create a dynamic component using ng if directive practically. And then in the later lectures, we will also learn how we can create a dynamic component using dynamic component loader approach.